Hello everyone, it is Jazz here. Today I am doing the book sacrifice tag, which was created by Ariel Bissette and I was tagged by Georgina Reads. And I will leave the links to both of those fabulous people's videos in the description. So go and check them out. So this tag was created to basically allow us to talk about the books that we don't really like. I did do this tag in my early booktube days. Now I have some new insights on some of these books that I'm going to talk about today and I also feel like I want to make it very very clear that my issues with the books I'm going to talk about today are with the books themselves. I think that's great if you enjoy what you enjoy. These books just don't personally work for me but I don't want anybody to take my opinions personal. All that being said let's go on to the scenarios that we're going to use to sacrifice some books I don't like to. You're perusing the merchandise in a bookstore and all of a sudden, bam, the zombie apocalypse strikes and over the sound system they announce that the only way to kill these zombies is to chuck over hyped books at them. What book are you going to chuck at these zombies? The book that I would honestly choose for this is the Harry Potter series. Hear that? That's the sound of people gasping in horror. I have not ever been able to complete a Harry Potter book. I have tried five or six times. The writing style is just not for me. But I feel like if you are gonna say you don't like something, you should know something about it. And also, I did want to get a lot of the references to the story because it is part of pop culture and people are gonna reference it. So I did watch all the movies. The reason I have chosen this as an overhyped book that I would check at Zombies is because there is a small percentage of people that have a really negative reaction to me when I say that I don't like these books. I have known people in my actual life, not on booktube, that don't want to be friends with me, say that they're disappointed in me as a human because I don't like these books, and that's really sad. And I feel like we should be able to discuss this book without disliking each other. And it's not all people. I have a lot of great friends that love the books, but some people are very sensitive about it, and I do think that a book has reached some overhyped level if people are that sensitive about it. That's all I'm saying. Scenario two, you've just gotten your fabulous haircut at the salon and all of the sudden there's a torrential downpour and all you have is a book and that is gonna protect your head from the downpour. What book would you use? Now my original answer to this was Thomas Harris's Hannibal because I really strongly dislike the end of this book. However, I said this before I had read the subsequent two books in the Divergent series. <laughs> I did think the first book was okay, but I did struggle with some of the premise and the concept of it. I probably didn't enjoy it because it's a situation in which people are separated into factions based on personality types. Does this sound familiar to you. Got to the second book, really, really did not like that second book. I started to notice some parallels between some other sci-fi things. To be clear, I'm not saying that Veronica Roth purposely ripped off these storylines because there is nothing new ever. Everything is taken from something else. I'm just saying that perhaps some of the elements in this second book were not like twisted enough to make it original from her point of view, enough for me to not notice that it was very similar to something else. I started to, to see some holes in the world building and also I started to really dislike a lot of the characters, but I went ahead and read the third book. I don't have an issue with the big thing that happens at the end of the series. My problem is with the actual content of the book itself in general. I felt that there wasn't enough direction in the storyline. The science element that she tried to inject into this third book didn't really make a whole abundance of sense. It just felt like the more she tried to explain how the genetic element was working in this, the less sense it made. And the big issue is that she wrote it from two perspectives and neither 
perspective was distinguishable from the other. Don't love these books and what bothers me so much is that I do not have them in physical copy. I own them in ebooks so I can't even use them to protect my head from rain. I can't even give them away. Number three, we're being taught in a lecture about a classic book and the teacher is going on and on about how it revolutionized literature and how fabulous it is and you know that this book is not so great and so you just get up and chuck that book at the teacher's head. Who cares about the consequences? Because it was totally worth it. So I kind of went into this on the classics book tag, but I will kind of tell you some more insights that I've thought about. I have had a revelation about classic novels, which is that I truly don't feel like I regret reading classic novels even if I don't like them because I do feel like classic novels in a way have innovative literature and different things in culture and if you know them it's like you're in on the secret and that's kind of cool. That being said though I still don't like Lord of the Flies and Alice in Wonderland as well as Through the Looking Glass. I did actually read Lord of the Flies for school. It was summer reading when I got out of eighth grade and was going into ninth grade. And the real issue with the book is not the actual plot. It's the fact that there is not really a lot of clarity. A lot of times you couldn't tell what was happening in the events in the book. A lot of times you couldn't tell who was talking. I felt like William Golding was really attached to the word creepers. And this is a man who taught school. I want to say, surely you had a thesaurus at hand to find another word for creepers. The book drove me nuts, even though I do think there are some really great concepts that this book explores. It has some really excellent symbolism. I'm really glad that I read the book because a lot of TV shows and movies and books do reference this book and I do know what they're talking about when they reference it. The only reason I would probably chuck this book at my teacher who made us read this is the fact that the only purpose to ever read Lord of the Flies is to discuss it. And I also think maybe later years of high school into college this book would be a great thing to study. Ninth grade summer reading? Not such a good idea. Now on to my Alice in Wonderland issues. I have watched some documentaries on this book and it has made me sort of see it in a new light because I feel like a lot of the issues that people have with this classic are because it is nonsense. Like it's total like no plot, no premise, no sanity. Charles Dawson aka Lewis Carroll intentionally wrote Alice in Wonderland to be that because most books back then for children were not fun books. They were all about like this is how to behave and this is how you should behave. And so he said that's so fun. Let's write something that's just total nonsense. Thus I could not hate on the book because that was his intention. That being said, this book disturbs me so, so very much. I do feel like the characters are really mean-spirited and I do feel like Alice just accepts that, which just bothers me. I will say that if you want to read Alice in Wonderland in a really cool way, that there is a really cool graphic novel of both Alice in Wonderland and through the looking glass. That's kind of the only way I could make it through through the looking glass with any sort of sanity. Probably though it won't check this book at the teacher too much. I actually think my copy is really quite pretty which is why I keep it. And it's got some really nice illustrations inside so even though I'm never gonna read it it's just gonna sit there looking beautiful on my shelf. Number four. So you're in a library and a climate change incident occurs and there's just like this epic cold snowstormness situation and the only way to stay warm is to burn a book. What book do you just dislike so much that you need to burn it? I'm always secretly very tempted to answer with Promised Valley Rebellion because I have to say that was one of the most painful reads for me. I always feel kind of bad because this was back when I used to have a book blog and it was a blog tour and this author sent me this book 
to review for free. It was hard going reading that book. It took a lot of music to get me through that because the writing style was a little bit on the board side. Also, I do feel like it was one of those issues where the summary and the general idea said it was going to be one thing and then you got into the book and it was just all over the place. It was like all the issues in one book and it was trying to do a little too much to the point where maybe there was a rebellion in Promise Valley Rebellion, but I couldn't find it. Even though I really strongly just like this book, I don't think I would burn it. Whenever burning books comes to mind in a tag, and I hate to harp on this book one more time, but we're gonna do it again. We're gonna talk about Slice of Cherry by Dia Reeves. A young adult book about two sisters that are serial killers. But they're not just any average serial killer. They live in a fictional city full of monsters where they also can like open doors and make their own worlds to kill people in weird ways in. Then again, this book disturbs me. And coming from somebody that reads Thomas Harris and Stephen King and Neil Gaiman who do occasionally you know, cross to that disturbing side and it has watched all the seasons of Dexter and enjoyed them, this should mean a lot. It's the only book in existence that I've ever been concerned about it existing in the world. The only book where I questioned the sanity of the author. In my opinion, this book is a book that should be in the adult section and not in the young adult section. Yes, the characters in it are young adults. The themes and everything that is going on in that book is to me not appropriate to put in the young adult section. There is a difference between books that contain disturbing matter and violence. If those things are actually there for a reason and having plot and there's maybe consequences to the actions of the characters, Slice of Cherry doesn't do that. Basically what this book is, is two girls that are murderers and because they murder people in a fantasy world of their own invention, there are absolutely no consequences for any of their actions. So the insanity and the violence in this book is just there to be creepy violence. It's there to just be disturbing. And that doesn't sit well with me. I'm all for anti-hero plots. I do really enjoy those, but in this case, if you don't feel like there's consequences for the character's actions, you feel like, what is going on here? So this book tries to do too much. It's got that fantasy element, it's got the serial killer element, it's got all sorts of other things that are crazy in it. And I will say, as somebody that watches a lot of true crime and reads some crime novels, that I don't feel like the research done for the ideology of these two serial killer characters is really particularly well researched which is probably something that would just bug me. The only reason I completed this book is it was one of those books where you go, this book cannot possibly get worse, and then it does. So yes, I went to burn every single copy of this book. That was the book sacrifice tag. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me rant about some books that I don't like. I'm gonna go ahead and tag whoever wants to do this tag, who hasn't done this tag, because you might as well just rip off that bad day and talk about those books that you don't like. That is all. Folks, I will see you all on Sunday. Thank you for watching. Bye!